before we get started on this video, I want to give a disclaimer. I'm a big supporter of solar energy. Anyone who is familiar with my channel will know that. The purpose of this video is to express my opinion regarding the aspect of solar that I find very disappointing. So take my opinions for what they are worth. Also, this is not one lie, this is actually three related lies that add up into one great disappointment for me. The first aspect of this lie is that you will never produce full rated power from your solar panels. Solar panels are rated for a specific output measured in watts, but in the real world you'll never get anywhere close to this number. That is because this rating is determined in a lab under carefully controlled test conditions. These conditions for solar are called STC, or Standard Test Conditions. The problem is, in the real world, solar panels will get dirty over time. Even a small amount of dust or bird poop or something else on your panels will affect its output. There are also numerous losses in the system that degrade the power from the point of generation to the point of use. In my experience, if you're getting 80% of the rated power from your solar panels, you're doing extremely well. But also because solar panels are generally mounted in a fixed position, there are inefficiencies based upon the time of year and the angle of the sun in the horizon. The second aspect of this lie is you can never totally eliminate your power bill in a grid-tied system. If you look at your power bill broken down on a monthly basis, you'll notice that your usage and demand fluctuates by month. So unless you overbuild your system and design it to meet the demand of that one large month, you're going to have some shortages somewhere. Not only that, but electricity prices are constantly rising across the world. So when you designed your system to give you a net zero payment today, over time that's going to go out of whack because the electricity prices that the electric company is going to charge you are going to go up and you're going to have to start paying money. And that is assuming that net metering still exists during the entire length of your payback period of your solar panels. In a lot of states and cities and municipalities, net metering is going away or the prices are decreasing that they're willing to pay you back. And the third and final aspect of this lie is for off-grid, unless you overbuild your system, you won't meet all of your needs. Whether you're living in a rural location or you're living in a cabin or an RV, there are going to be things that you're not thinking of that you use that will skew your power usage. One of those examples would be power tools. Maybe you need to make some repairs to your, to your cabin or something like that, and you need to uh, plug in some power tools or recharge those power tools. That's something that you didn't foresee and thus increases your power usage. And then there are hard to forecast devices that you use in your home that's kind of difficult to get an average of because they're used intermittently, such as a hair dryer and a coffee maker. Now you may be able to estimate your usage and add that into your system design, but the more of these assumptions and guesses that you make, the higher the margin of error is in your system and the less likely you are to get it right the first time. And then there is the weather. Unless you're going to be an Iron Man and not use any air conditioning or heating, there will be those extreme hot and cold days where you're going to use those systems more than normal. And last but not least is that the cells in your solar panels will degrade over time. It is well known that they degrade in a linear fashion over time and the warranty reflects that so that by the time you get to the 25 year mark they're only warrantied for about 85% of their rated output. So even if you're smarter than all the rest of us or you get extremely lucky and hit a bullseye, five years, ten years later you're going to have a problem. In the end, all of this adds up to me to be a little bit disappointing in solar. When I got into this about six years ago, I had high dreams and high expectations like a lot of you do. I talk to dozens of people a month about this, and generally speaking, their expectations are higher than what solar can actually do in the real world. Unless you're rich, of course, or you just overbuild the heck out of your system. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so and also leave me a like on this video.